Hey guys, Max here, and this is Odd and Unexplained. This is a series where I'll be talking about things that intrigue me that are odd and unexplained. Uh, it's not quite unexplained YouTube, it's gonna lack the humor, it's gonna be more straightforward, but I hope I can bring something to the table and tell you guys about something that maybe you haven't heard about before. Uh, I don't know why I want to do this, it just seems like maybe it could be a fun little thing. I've allotted myself five hours of research per case that I'm going to be talking about. So we'll see how far that gets me. And today I have a man named Jim Sullivan that went missing in 1975. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. So Jim Sullivan was born August 13th, 1940. And he was a musician in the Southern California area and he had a little bit of clout to his name. So Jim's wife worked for Capitol Records, and uh, he did manage to get two albums put out. One was called UFO, which was released in 1969, and the second one was put out in 1972, and it was self-titled. Now, his life, you know, he kind of, he did all right in the scene, all right, I say. He had a regular gig at a club, and he knew a few big names, but he never really broke the scene. So he, this sort of led to a a slight downward spiral in his home life. He was developing a drinking problem. Um, f from what I've read, he seems to have fallen into a bit of depression. That I think that plays into a big part of what had happened to him. I do know that he left Los Angeles on March 4th between, uh, I believe it was noon and 1 p.m. that day. And he drove for straight for 15 hours until the wee hours of the morning on March 5th. Now on March 5th, he was pulled, in the morning of March 5th, early morning of March 5th, he was pulled over by police near Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Um, they thought he had been drinking and driving or was intoxicated or, or some such thing. Um, it turned out he was just fatigued and they gave him a slew of sobriety tests and he passed. And so they said, look man, you gotta sleep. And they appointed him to the nearest motel in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. He did indeed check into the La Mesa Motel in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Um, it was there that he kind of disappeared. He, it turned out once he had disappeared when they searched his motel room that it was basically unused. All they found was the motel room key locked in the motel room itself. The bed wasn't turned. It didn't look like the bathroom or anything had been used, uh, at least recently. One of the articles that I read stated that Sullivan had bought a bottle of vodka before he had taken his last drive, or what was thought to be his last drive. There didn't seem to be much substance behind it, but it's worth mentioning. So his vehicle was a Volkswagen Beetle. I'm not sure what year, and I did try to look up what year the car was. It was found 26 miles away from the motel on a ranch owned by the Gennetti family. Now, some accounts of the family and the story and all this have him being approached by the matriarch of the family about trespassing. A few other accounts have him being approached by the ranch hands about trespassing. The interesting part about the Gennetti family is that they are thought, well, rumored to have had connections with organized crime. I don't know that there's much substance behind that. Again, I'm not in the organized crime business, so I don't know for sure. Um, whether or not that had anything to do with him disappearing, who knows. I personally don't think so, and I'll get to that later. All right, so back to his car. It was a Volkswagen Beetle, and it was found 26 miles away from the hotel, like I said earlier. It was found locked, and some of his belongings were inside. Um, his wallet, which when he had left from Los Angeles had $120 in it. His 12-string guitar was found in the car. A box of his records, unsold records of his self-titled album were found in the car. Uh, a plan book, uh, cassette tapes, and any other number amount of personal belongings were found in there. Um, which is very strange. Why would that just be left in there? The engine was also, according to some articles that I read, the engine was also dead. My guess would be maybe the headlights were left on and the battery was drained or maybe he simply ran out of fuel or something like that. Many speculate that due to the themes of his first record entitled UFO that indeed he wandered out into the desert and was taken by UFOs. I don't think this is what happened. That's a bit fantastic to me. I think from what I know, from what I've read, from what I understand of him, he was probably depressed. I'm not going to say for sure because I didn't know him. He was probably beat down by the industry. He was a bit older for the industry. He was 34 years old. He hadn't quite had his break in music. And uh, I don't know, it just seems more, and he, I don't, he could have been on a substance. He could have been intoxicated if he did indeed buy that bottle of vodka that I mentioned earlier. And he just succumbed to the 
exposure of the of the land around him. It's worth noting a conversation that his manager later talked about. Uh, Robert Genter, his manager, said that a conversation once took place between he and Sullivan where Sullivan said that he ever wanted to disappear or get lost, that he would simply wander out into the desert and never come back. Um, thinking of that, that kind of puts it all together in my mind anyway. I think he probably was in over his head when he was going on his spirit hike and he probably just had an accident or something and he lost his way back. Alright guys, and that's all I have for this first uh, odd and unexplained. Jim Sullivan's record UFO is on YouTube if you want to take a listen. It's interesting. I don't know if it's my thing, but it's, uh, it's there if you want to listen to it. So I don't know what I'm going to do next. It might be missing people. It might be anything else that interests me that is a little bit strange. So I'll see you next time.